Hello everybody and welcome to Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. I'm Jack and today, as you can see, we are having a, we've got another Sun and Moon deck analysis for you guys. Um, this one's going to be on Incineroar GX, another of the starter GXs from this set. Really, really efficient attacker. Um, a little disclaimer before we start, I know Ori, I think it's Oricorio, has been revealed and that is such a good card for this deck. It really, really pushes it um, in, into a sort of a next level. The card is insane. But we know for a fact we're not getting that in our first Sun and Moon set. Um, and all of these deck lists will be based off of what we're getting in our first Sun and Moon set. We're also not featuring any lists with Choice Band, another really, really good card, from this mini set that Japan are getting. Um, but because we've had a full set list revealed for Sun and Moon 1, and we know we're not getting any of these cards, we wanted to get a an initial Incineroar deck list out to you, and some of these other initial lists out to you, that will inev inevitably be improved by things like Choice Band, and in this case, Oricorio. But we wanted to, like we say, we wanted to get these lists out so you could start to play with these um, decks and see how you like them. We will update this and any of the lists that really benefit from the new cards that are being revealed in this mini set. As and when we know how we're getting them. I'm suspecting well, we won't see them until Sun and, Moon's, Sun and Moon 2, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, we wanted to get this list out to you. And don't worry, we, we, we are aware of this new Pokemon. And we will... Um, update the list as and when we know how we're getting it. But for now we're just sort of basing it off of what we're, what we're getting in Sun and Moon 1 and because of that um, we're not running it. So to start with we're running 4 Litten and then 1 Toracat. Um, the 4 Litten are pretty standard, 70 HP, 1 for 10, 2 for 20 style attacks, nothing crazy, just kind of your standard attacks. Worth noting uh, the basic has 70 HP which is, which is a little bit um, over what we kind of ex or what we have been expecting over the past couple of years. So we can really tell that the Pokemon are trying to push this evolution style format. We've got 1 Toracat, 90 HP, um, 2 attacks, weak, uh, sorry yeah, weak to water both of these guys are. And... Yeah, two attacks for one fire. We have 20 flip three coins. It does 20 times the number of heads, so up to 60 damage for one energy, which is which seems all right until we look at Incineroar. And then we've got two color, uh, two fire and a colorless for 90, and you discard an energy. So, um, yeah, pretty standard stuff from these guys. We're, of course, running a rare candy engine, but we do still need one Toracat just in case we do get item locked. Obviously, we believe Vileplume is potentially going to be one of the bigger decks going into this format. So we want to be able to make sure we do have... We're not just completely locked out of the game if our opponent plays Vileplume. So it is useful to know that we do have one of these guys in here. On to Incineroar himself. Incineroar GX... 250 HP, huge, huge HP. Um, worth noting, just for anyone that's unaware, I know you probably all are by now, but even so, the GX mechanic um, is very similar to the EX mechanic. When this guy is knocked out, your opponent takes two prizes. However, two differences. One, they can be evolu evolution Pokemon, as you can see. This is a stage 2 GX, hence the huge 250 HP. And they also have um, a special a special attack called a GX attack. You can only use one GX attack per game, and these attacks are usually pretty pretty devastating. They're usually uh, very powerful effects, so you can only use one per game. So you've got to time it right. But yeah, this guy is really really cool. 250 HP, like I say, is monstrous. Um, and the deck has various sort of playstyles to it all in one deck. Um, it means that we can really at times abuse this 250 HP and force our opponent to really really struggle to knock this guy out. And then weak to water and three retreat cost. Obviously three is kind of hefty, but we are running float stones, so it's not the end of the world. Um, three attacks, including one GX attack, as I've mentioned. First attack, hustle blow for one fire, does 10 damage. Um, and then 20 more for each fire Pokemon on your bench. This is why um, Oricor is it Oricorio? I think it's Oricorio. I'm going to say that. Um, is really, really good for this deck because it searches out these fire Pokemon um, early in the early turns. So obviously this is this would be a natural partner for it, but as I've said, we we are aware, but we're not going to put this guy in just because we're not fully um, aware how we're going to be getting this card yet. So for now, um, we're just kind of playing a different style engine. But yeah, it means that for one energy, you can do some huge damage with a Skyfield out with eight fire Pokemon on the bench. You can actually be doing 170, which knocks out a lot of EXs. Um, because you've got 8 Pokemon on the bench, that, and then 2 times each of those, so that's 16, so that's 160 damage, plus the 10 base, 170, really, really nice numbers. 
Um, the sec that and that's kind of what we're building the deck around. He does have two other attacks though. His second attack for Fire Fire Colorless does 80, and you flip two coins. Does 50 more for each head, so that's Tiger Swing. Um, obviously, that can reach the magical 180, which also knocks out EX Pokemon, but that's a lot more risky. Uh, you have to have good flips, so more often than not, you're going to be wanting to use Hustle Blow, unless you're using his uh, GX attack, Burn Slam GX, for Fire Fire Colorless, does 200 damage, and automatically burns your opponent's active Pokemon. So, with the way the new burn mechanic works, um, before you flipped a coin, and if it was a heads, your opponent took an extra 20 damage in between the mid in between turns, um, and if it was a Tails, they didn't. However, now this damage is automatically applied, so you always do the 20. And then your opponent flips a coin to see whether they retain that 20, uh, retain that burn condition. So essentially, this is like having a muscle band on it. This is like doing 220 damage automatically. So if you factor in that, um, it means you can really knock out some of these new GXs as well. Obviously, the the Pokemon, the HP of these Pokemon is ramping up a little bit. So it means that we do have a way to be able to deal with these huge HP Pokemon. If we're not hitting them for weakness, or we don't want to sort of two-shot them, we can do up to 220 damage with this Burn Slam GX attack. And then we do have a Professor Kakui in here as well to push us even further into the damage range. We have for Fire-type Bench Sitters, and this is a really good start of the deck actually, um, we have Volcanion. Volcanion obviously has been seen in the other Volcanion deck, uh, where he is paired with his EX counterpart. However, in this case, we're just running the Baby Volcanion because um, EX Volcanion can't power up the attacks of Incineroar. So, obviously, we know what this guy does. Power Heater for 1 energy does 20 damage, and you can choose two of your bench Pokemon. And attach a Fire Energy from your discard to each of those. So this can be a nice sort of... Uh, Pokemon to use early turn because if you've got a Volcanion active doing damage you can have your Littons on the bench setting them up um, whilst they're Littons and then you're able to when this either this Volcanion gets knocked out or maybe you just retreat out or switch out with Floatstones things like that um, you can then start using your Incineroars once they're powered up but for now rather than leaving sort of a Litten or a Toracat in the active spot ready to get knocked out we at least are doing something we're at least sort of putting a little bit of damage on our opponent peppering them up a little bit and being able to set up our board at the same time. Obviously incredibly good because they're also a basic type, a basic Pokemon. So we can just throw them down onto the bench for an extra 20 damage whenever we need them. Um, so yeah, really, really nice. And having four means that we start with it as often as we start with Lit uh, Litten. Which is really important because, like we say, we don't want to have to sort of actively give away Littens in the active spot. Um, because these can become Toracats, which are our main attackers. So having Volcanions is really nice. Obviously, he does have three for 100 as well, but pretty much if you're attaching three energy, you're probably better off attaching three to um, the Incineroars anyway. We're then running, for the last few fire types, we're running a 2 1 Nine Tails line. Um, so we're running two of the basic just because we, these are sort of our damage boosters could get away with in a deck like this you'd maybe get you maybe see something like a 1-1 one, one. but because this is an extra 20 damage um, we wanted to run the 2-1 just because it means that we can actively have another Pokemon on the bench and be able to do a little bit of extra damage and then of course we're running the Barrier Shrine Ninetales um, we want to be able to lock in Skyfield. Skyfield is uh, another way that this deck can really sort of apply pressure. This deck doesn't mind sort of taking two hit knockouts, but with a Skyfield in play and eight Pokemon on the bench, if we can lock that in, we we're doing 180 damage or 170 damage, sorry. And then if our opponent can't get around Nine Tails um, by getting rid of its ability or Lysander knocking it out, things like that, it means that our Skyfield is locked into play, and we are able to keep this full bench of eight and do huge huge damage all the time. So yeah, Ninetales is a really, really nice Pokemon for this deck, and because it's also a fire type as well, it's another Pokemon that just ups our damage count. We don't mind having this guy sit on the bench, just because he's naturally going to be um, doing a bit more for our damage as well. So yeah, a really, really nice Pokemon to have. And then of course, finally, we do have two Shaman. Obviously these aren't fire types, which means that every Shaman we have on the bench is not a fire type, and hence it's not an extra 20 damage. But for a deck like this, where you are going to be looking for a lot of different pieces, things like the rare candies, the incineral pieces. Um, Shaman is just nice for being able to cycle through the deck. We all know what Shaman does, so yeah, it's unfortunate that they don't complement the damage, um, but we feel we need them just to be able to keep cycling through the deck and keep up with some of these other decks in the format. 
onto the trainers, we're running three Sycamore and three N. Um, initially, you would think something like a Bridget or something like that would be good in the list, but because uh, and you would think it, it, like it makes sense to think to think that um, because you want to be able to get a lot of fire types onto your bench uh, in the early turns to be able to do a lot of damage. But the important thing is being able to cycle through your deck to find your rare candies and your incineroars to be able to evolve up into them. So if we're Bridgeting, we then have to actively find those resources a lot of the time on the next turn. Whereas if we can Sycamore into them on the first turn, it means that we don't we know we don't have to sort of rely on only one Sycamore. Because if we don't get them on the first turn, but we still got a few bench Pokemon down, we can then Sycamore or N again and still try and find them. It's just a little bit nicer to be able to sort of guarantee them a little bit more. You could try one Bridget in here. We're currently not playing a Bridget or a fan club or anything like that. Um, and it does sort of make sense to the deck's archetype. But I feel being able to cycle through um, the deck is just as important because a lot of these Pokemon are interested to play anyway. And we're running two Super Rod as well. So if you're discarding some things that maybe you don't feel comfortable discarding, we are running Recovery as well. So that's why I feel Sycamore and N in high counts do a similar job to how... Um, sort of a Bridget or a fan club would on turn one. Also, if you're only running maybe one or two fan club, you're going to struggle to find them consistently on turn one. And because of that, later on in the game, they're often not as good as they would be on the early turns. So you'd need to run a higher count of them. Um, and that takes away slots for things like N and Skylar and Lysander, things like that. So we've gone for this kind of setup. The 3-3 three, three line um, is just because we like having shuffle draw equally as much as discard draw obviously there are some things that we can't get back with the recovery things like rare candies and stuff so n is not at all a bad supporter for turn one also um this deck retains a lot of its sort of damage on board providing you can lock in your stadium um this deck has a lot of sort of damage that they keep on board so you often only need to find one energy maybe or maybe nothing at all you don't need a hand size because all of the damage multipliers are on the bench so sometimes you're able to end yourself to low hands as well as your opponent just to try and get them out of the win the next turn um, and you don't really sort of harm yourself just because a lot of your damage is on your board already next up we have two Skylar obviously in a list that plays rare candy really nice to have Skylar uh, it's just sort of an auto search. It means that we can find our rare candies if we get it turned to, and we're holding an Incineroar. If we're holding a rare candy, we can search for an Ultra Ball and find an Incineroar. It's just a really nice card, nice card and a rare candy deck. Also running two Lysander. Again, we can one-shot things, uh, but we don't mind two-shotting things. Uh, but we can pretty much consistently always one-shot Shamans. So being able to Lysander kill Shamans is really nice. Being able to Lysander semi up and just blowing it up with Burn Slam is also really nice for the last two prizes. Um, and it's it's not a deck that doesn't mind just hitting through anything because you do kind of need to be careful with the prize race. You need to think about where your prizes are going to be, um, how you're going to take them, and when you're going to need to sort of preserve resources and when you're going to need to go more all out. So we don't want to just sort of constantly hit whatever our opponent throws at us and take six prizes that way. Uh, we want to take sort of quite important knockouts in the game to be able to see where where our prizes are coming from and where our win conditions are. Obviously like I'm saying this deck can one one to two shot things quite consistently quite consistently. Um, and it often as you'll see when we get to some of the cards later on, it can win the prize race through things like floatstone, dodging, um, or making your forcing your opponent to find Lysanders through max potions because this only costs one energy so we can easily max potion and attach another energy but you need to be able to sort of plan all this ahead so having two Lysander rather than just one means that we're able to knock out anything we want on our opponent's field really finally we've got one Professor Kikui um, again Burn Slam can hit up to 240 with this technically including Burn which knocks out um, I believe all but four or five GXs and Waylord. Um, I think there may be a couple of things that it doesn't, but like I'm saying, this just pushes us into sort of that one-hit knockout range even more. It means that we can, if we are stuck taking prizes on whatever our opponent wants us to, if it's something that they want to use to try and tank, we're able to blow through it with our GX attack if we want. So yeah, and having that extra inbuilt card draw means that it's better than Giovanni as well. Um just keeps you sort of cycling ready for next turn. It means that you're not completely wasting your supporter for the turn on a knockout. Whilst that's often good enough, it means that you are able to cycle into some more answers for next turn as well. 
onto the items, we've got four VS Seeker, of course, pretty standard. Um, just being able to reuse our supporters is really good. Four rare candy in a deck like this, it makes sense. We want to be able to find these in, as consistently as possible. We want to be getting this turn to Incineroar as consistently as possible. So with four rare candy and two Skylar, it means that we have a lot of outs to be able to search for all of these pieces. Hence why we're also running two, uh, four Ultra Ball. Just so Skylar can search either of these if we have one of the other pieces in hand. So yeah, just really, really nice sort of comp all, all complement one another. Two Nest Ball, a new card from the Sun and Moon set. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it onto your bench. Really nice uh, with some of these Pokemon. It means that in the early turns we can find our Littons more consistently. This is another reason why we don't really need Bridget or Fan Club. Just because this is sort of a pseudo Fan Club or Bridget. That we can also then um, complement with another supporter. So yeah, early turns it searches out our Littons. Later on in the game it searches out those extra 20 damages here and that 20 damage boosters here and there um, in some of these other basic Pokemon. So yeah, just a really, really nice um, card to use. Obviously we don't want too many of them because in the later, in the later turns when we're looking for Incineroar pieces they're not as useful. Um, but the, you can kind of see these as um, double plus power sometimes and things like that. So yeah, really, really nice um, applications for Nest Ball. As I was saying, we've also got two Max Potion. Because this guy only costs one energy to do his Hustle Blow attack, means that we can uh, sort of do 100 to 110. Um, we can we can take a hit. Then we can max potion, do 100 around that damage again, and get a knockout. They have to then um, hit us back. If they're not able to two-shot us, we can actually take two hits and then max potion, and we get so much value out of that. But more often than not, we are going to be getting two-shot. It just means that we're able to um, slow them down a turn and go, like run ahead in the prize race that way. Obviously there are some Pokemon in here, like the Littons and the Vulpixes, that can get knocked out early on, because they're quite low HP basics. Um, so you want to be able to, once we're set up, we want to be able to slow our opponent down and stop them from sort of steamrolling us after that. So because of that, Max Potion sort of slows our opponent down by a turn, like I'm saying, and means that we win the prize race that way. Then we've got two Super Rod again, like I've been saying with the recovery thing to do with the sycamore we're running two super rod just so if we do discard anything that we're not too happy with from the incineral line or maybe we have to discard the nine tails or something like that we are able to get them back it means that we don't run out of steam early on or towards the um middle to late game and it means that we're always able to sort of reach those one hit knockouts as and when we need them to take those last couple of prizes because we can shuffle three or four pokemon back in after maybe we've lost our sky field or something like that. Speaking of which, we are running three sky field. Because you lock one in, often you, often we don't need four because we can sometimes just force our opponent to not be able to play them and di have to discard them to search for answers. Um, so we don't need four. And also this deck doesn't mind just going for two shots. Sky field is really only when you're able, able to take a one shot and it's not going to cost you too many resources or put you in too bad of a position if it goes wrong. But it does mean that you can push up to 170 damage if you don't have Shamans on the bench, um, meaning that you can knock out some of these bigger EX Pokemon um, and sort of race that way as well. It, and then we, like, if you then get knocked out or lose your stadium, you are able to burn Slam GX later on for another quick two prizes. So it, you can sort of go the race route, but you can also go go sort of the value route with the max potions and only having five on the bench, just because you're often able to um, out outlast your opponent that way as well. And then finally, two float stones. As I've been saying, this guy has three retreat, which is kind of chunky. This guy has two retreat. We want to be able to move these things out of the active, so we can't be Lysander stalled. Um, and there's nothing major that we really need, sort of tool-wise. So yeah, floatstones are a really, really nice one. And then finally, we do have eight fire energy. We don't need all that many, simply because this guy only has a one cost attack, one fire energy cost attack. It means that we don't always get a lot of value out of Volcanion's first attack power heater. Um, but that's not what the deck's about. So we just... Even if we just get one energy with that, it means that we're attaching a second energy on turn one, which is a nice little sort of ramp into being able to get knockouts um, 
earlier and quicker. We don't need loads. We're not running anything like Scorched Earth to be able to discard them um, to set up Power Heater and draw more cards. So it makes sense just to attach them where you need them. Don't deliberately go out of your way to discard them just to get a load of value from Volcanion, but know that you can get Volcan uh, you can get Volcanion to power up some of your Pokemon in the early turns um, if as and when you need. But it just means that we've got a nice amount to be able to con consistently attach, um, but then not worry about c them clogging the hand later on in the game because we're only running eight, so it means that we're often able to just throw some down or throw some in the discard, and we're not going to be sort of top decking them all the time as well. So yeah, this is a really really nice list. It's super sort of simple. We've just got high counts of Pokemon to be able to do big damage. Um, sort of different win conditions. We've got the Skyfield and Kakui combo to be able to um, apply more pressure and deal with sort of bigger things um, and win that way. And then we've also got the Max Potions to be able to win on the more conservative route and maybe only take um, sort of two shots, but if our opponent can't one shot us, or yeah, if it's essentially if our opponent can't one shot us as well, um, it's really really nice. The other nice thing is because of the one energy attack cost with Incineroar, it makes the Eveltal match incredibly nice. It means that they have to attach so much energy to be able to one shot a an Incineroar from full HP. Um, meaning that they're kind of always taking the two-shot route as well. And when they're doing that, we can also play into the Max Potion sort of style of playing. Um, it means that we're not... With things like Volcanion that seem to be um, doing good, you may wonder why you'd play this deck. But this deck um, doesn't sort of go all out, attach a load of energy to Volcanion, and then get countered by a big Yveltal. This is a bit of a slower deck, but it also is a bit more conservative with resources, and it's um, it can be a struggle to knock out this 250 HP stage 2. Obviously, it is it can have some consistency, issue, consistency issues sometimes with the style of a rare candy stage 2 deck, but that's why we're running things like Skylar, um, to be able to search out for individual pieces and keep our board sort of setting up. But yeah, it's a really, really nice deck. I'm really, really liking it at the moment. Um, and yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely one for you guys to try. So we are like I like I said at the start of the video, we are aware of the new fire type um, or Oricorio. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with that, and we will be updating the deck as soon as we know how we're getting it. But unfortunately, it's probably not gonna be until um, Sun and Moon two or around then. So because of that, we wanted to get this list out to you so you can start testing with Incineroar for now, um, as as soon as Sun and Moon comes out, so you're able to try and take this deck to tournaments so yeah thank you very much for watching i've been jack from omnipoke i hope you've enjoyed and i look forward to seeing you in another video